Longhouses stood in some of the wettest, windiest landscapes in Europe, yet their roof timbers endured generation after generation. No modern membranes, no pressure-treated lumber, no synthetic vents, just wood, turf, wind, and an understanding of how air behaves under a roof. If you study Viking structures closely, a single design detail appears again and again, subtle but decisive. It is not decorative, and it is not accidental. It is a venting method that allowed rain to fall, storms to rage, and still kept timber dry. This detail explains why roof beams survived where modern roofs often fail, and it offers a lesson that still applies to anyone building for longevity today. The vent was not a hole, but a raised breathing seam at the roof's highest point. Viking roofs did not use sealed ridge lines. Instead, many longhouses employed a lifted ridge board or a narrow continuous gap protected by overlapping materials. Turf, wooden shingles or thatch were arranged so that air could escape upward while rain was deflected sideways by gravity and wind pressure. This was not an open skylight. It was a controlled release point that allowed warm, moist air from inside the hall to exit naturally. By letting moisture escape at the highest point, the roof structure stayed dry even during prolonged storms. The secret was using pressure and wind, not fighting them. During storms, wind creates negative pressure on the leeward side of a roof. Viking builders, you see, exploited this by shaping the ridge vent so that moving air pulled moisture out rather than forcing rain inward. The raised ridge acted like a low-pressure zone, drawing damp air up and out. Rainwater, driven by gravity, followed the steeper outer surfaces of turf or shingles and shed away from the opening. This balance between air movement and water shedding is the heart of the design. Modern vents often fail because they rely on mechanical barriers instead of airflow physics. You know, smoke actually played an unexpected but critical role in keeping timber dry. Viking halls were heated by open hearths, and smoke would rise continuously toward the ridge. As it passed through the vent seam, it carried moisture with it. Over time, smoke residues coated roof timbers with a thin layer of tar-like compounds that resisted fungi and insects. The ridge vent also prevented a dangerous temperature imbalance. Sealed roofs trap warm air, which rises and condenses when it meets cold surfaces. Viking roofs avoided this by allowing heat to escape gradually. This reduced the temperature difference between interior air and roof timbers, minimizing condensation during heavy rain or snow melt. You know, dry wood actually lasts longer than treated wood that stays wet. The vent made that possible, even in those harsh northern climates. Applying this Viking detail today, well, it really begins with rethinking ridge design, not just adding gadgets. Modern roofs can definitely borrow this concept by making sure the ridge is the primary moisture exit point. Material layering, honestly, matters just as much as the vent itself. Viking builders would layer turf, bark or shingles so that water always had a downhill path away from openings. 
The Viking ridge vent was uh, narrow and continuous, not wide and intermittent. This prevented sudden gusts from, you know, driving rain inward, while still allowing moisture to escape along the entire roof length. When applying this today, continuous ridge vents outperform small box vents because they distribute airflow evenly and reduce pressure spikes. This is especially important in storm-prone regions where wind direction shifts rapidly. The broader lesson is that Viking roofs were designed to dry, not to stay dry. No roof is perfectly waterproof forever. Viking builders accepted this reality and, well, focused on drying speed rather than total exclusion. That single raised ridge vent kept timber alive through storms, winters and centuries of use. It worked because it respected physics, materials, and climate rather than trying to overpower them. If you value these kinds of hard-earned building lessons from the past, subscribe to Thermal Vault, share this video with fellow builders and history enthusiasts, and help keep this knowledge alive where it belongs.